All right, coming to you from the CTO lab in Round Rock again with Don Walker. Now we're getting to the third part in our series, the actual actual installation process. Don, do you mind uh, walking us through this? Sure, not at all. Uh, so this is a continuation of our previous uh, discussions about uh, what our basic platform uh, is that we, we're going to deploy Triton on and how we configured it. Uh, so as I mentioned in the previous discussions, we have it's a simple installation, basically. It's got two, two nodes, two of our R730s, one configured as a head node running the Triton services and as a uh, administrative administration portal into the system, and a second R730 R as our compute nodes. Uh, so uh, that's what we're, how we're going to install Triton, as a head node and a compute node. Now, the first thing you install is the head node. Uh, you have to create a bootable USB key, and instructions are on the, uh, the joint website for doing that. It's dead simple. It's very, very easy. They've got a great description out there and pointers to utilities to help you do that. Uh, but one of the things before you, you actually get into installing joint, you've got to have your network set up and working beforehand. That's one of the prerequisites. And so we talked a little bit last time, our discussion about how we have our particular hardware set up for networking. Uh, but we didn't talk about the actual network configuration very much other than the fact that we have mode 4 uh, bonds and we have uh, between our switches at 6000s we have uh, lags on them. Uh, so part of what we did to make sure we had this working uh, network configuration is uh, on the R730s, uh, one of the first things I did was actually install a variant of, of Linux on it. Uh, when we compose uh, install and, and configure it, I'm sorry, when we configured our, our S6000s, we created uh, three VLANs you need as a, as a minimum. Uh, and we've got, we just numbered them 3000, which is we use as our, our admin. It's an untagged net VLAN. Uh, we have, and, and the admin network, by the way, is used by the Triton services as well as uh, <coughs> operator type uh, traffic over that one. Uh, there's the extra, we created an external VLAN, it's also on tag, and we just named it 3001. Uh, that, of course, is the name implies external, is to give you external access, the containers, uh, even smart OS, which is part of the, uh, the, the underlying OS for Triton, uh, to give it access to the outside world, which is a prerequisite. Uh, before you ever install, start the install process, you have to make sure uh, that it has external access to the internet. Uh, and of course, finally, we have uh, a, a third VLAN 3002, which is called the Underlay Network. It's basically just the network, it's a, a layer two network that's available for Triton services to apportion out uh, network configurations to the containers and VMs as they're deployed. Uh, so once we had that all set up and configured, and we ran installed Linux on both of the, the head nodes and the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, on the head node and the compute node initially, just to check out the networking and make sure we had external internet access, then we start, we boot from the, the, the USB key that we created, the, the head node, we boot the head node, what will be the head node, from the USB key, and start the installation process. Uh, now you have to have, ahead of time, uh, so network configuration information, you have to have your IP addresses and what the range of those IP addresses are. You need to know what you're going to name your, your basically your domain for the, uh, uh, internally for the uh, uh, Triton setup. Uh, and there's a checklist on the joint website that gives you a great checklist and just make sure you go through and you have all that information ahead of time before you actually begin the, uh, the setup. Once you begin the setup, it's all scripted, so it's just dead simple. Uh, the only issues that we had during the setup was our networking with these bonds and these lags uh, was a little bit out of the ordinary, not much, and so the documentation in places was a little unclear as to how to do that, but the joint guys are already working on updating that, doc that, that documentation, and if it's not already out on their website, I'm sure it will be updated here within a matter of uh, days or weeks. So once you start the installation process, you boot it off the USB key, it starts, it's all scripted. And it's very, very simple. It is just dead easy. Uh, but the first thing you install is a head node. And what's installed on the head node is, of course, smart, lays down smart OS first, which is, uh, you know, has an open Solaris heritage. And uh, the, uh, the services, the Triton services that will run. 
So uh, once that, that completes, uh, then the next thing is, and in the process of installing the head note, you enter some configuration parameters, and some of the information you'll enter would be information that's needed for the compute node install that's next. Uh, the compute node install, once you get through with the, uh, with the head node, the compute uh, node install is just dead simple. Again, it's all scripted, but you already entered a lot of the information uh, during the process uh, that you'll need the, the configuration information. You already entered a lot of that in the head node install process. So it takes just a very short time, uh, maybe half an hour to an hour to actually install, uh, get the compute node installed and configured. Uh, once we've finished with that, uh, then there's a suite of acceptance tests uh, that you can run. And uh, those ran without issue, and it took a little while to run those. They're, they're fairly extensive. You can do a simple acceptance test, or you can do more uh, uh, sophisticated acceptance tests, which might take, a, which do take a little bit longer, of course. But uh, those are all actually very simple, and, and they they ran to completion without issues, and we had no problems. Now, we did have a couple of little. I want to point out something about the great support uh, that we get from from Joint uh, is that we did have a few little little problems during the install. Uh, but we had a support engineer here on site working with us, uh, and a couple of little problems we had, we figured out very, very quickly, and uh, that information was fed back to the developers at Joint, and uh, we had actually two problems. Well, one was a problem, and one was just a little uh, sort of a nit. Uh, one problem was we had put an unacceptable character in our password, uh, and that caused a little bit of problems downstream during the install, but that was figured out pretty quickly and pretty easily and uh, actually we fed that information back to the developers and nobody else will have that problem it's already been fixed and is out there uh, so the second issue we had wasn't really an issue at all uh, we had the set internal sound port enabled on our servers uh, the joint Triton uh, installation documents tell you to disable the sound port which we didn't do uh, and we actually went through the installation and everything installed, everything worked okay. We just kept getting these annoying uh, error messages popping up about the SATA port. Uh, so we, uh, the simple fix was to go in and disable the SATA port as the instructions uh, told you to do. And I took care of that problem. Uh, so it wasn't really a, much of an issue at all. Uh, so that pretty much wraps it up for the installation piece of it. It was uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Is there, so before we get to the tee-up of the next topic, if you had any advice to give someone looking to do this, is, what would you say, or a couple of words of wisdom? Uh, it's actually very easy if, if you follow the instructions. Now, there were some vagueness in the instructions around uh, uh, link aggregation uh, bonding, but that information, that those instructions are already being updated uh, by the joint team. So. I don't think anybody should have any issues at all. It's, it's very well scripted, it's self-driven. Uh, as long as you have the network piece of it uh, up and running and working ahead of time, you have to have external internet access, of course. As long as you follow the instructions, everything should work just fine. I don't think there's uh, uh, anything to it. Just like bacon a turkey. Yeah. All right, so what do we got coming up next? Uh, so that pretty much covers the uh, the hardware and the installation of the of the basic system. Uh, the next part we'll, we'll actually move into talking about uh, uh, the challenges and what it's like to actually port the application. As I mentioned a couple of videos ago, we're going to take our Active Systems Manager ASM and see what it's going to take to containerize it and put it under the, uh, the joint Triton platform. And uh, we'll have uh, one of the ASM architects next time actually talking about ASM and, and how we think we're going to containerize that application. Don Walker, thanks so much. Thanks.